Okay, hi everyone. Um, I've been doing a series and I just started it, uh, the last one. This will be my second of a series. Uh, it's going to be probably around four or five. Um, but the overall name of this is how can we make a difference? So I'm talking to each individual believer um, on how you can make a difference. Many times uh, as believers, especially you know, in, in being involved in church things, uh, we can get in a, a routine of going to church on Sunday and then go to church on Sunday and then go to church on Sunday. Pretty much, our, if we're not careful, our Christian experience can just be go attending a church on Sunday, sitting there, listening to somebody talk. But as far as us doing anything else, we, you, we can very easily fall short of what we're supposed to do. Now, in the first lesson, I used the scripture, Matthew 28, uh, the Great Commission, it's called, and where Jesus, just before he left, which is which would have been a very important time, he told them, he says, look, I want you guys to go out and make disciples of the nations. I want you to teach them the same thing and disciple them in the same thing, the commandments that I taught you, you teach them now. And so go out and multiply this process of making disciples. And so the question is, have we done that? I don't see that we've done that. I've, um, most churches hardly ever talk about discipleship. Now, this lesson I'm going to go over, part of it is discipleship, and I've touched on it a little bit, but that's just the avenue to which to achieve of making a difference. So can we as individuals make a difference? Absolutely. We can be involved in God's will uh, by doing certain activities. So I want to make some assumptions here. If you've known the Lord now, say two or three or four years, you've been discipled by somebody, then you are ready to disciple people. Now I can't, I can't say to each of you, yeah, you're ready, but you need to talk to the leadership in your church. You need to, you know, talk to people and see if they think you're ready. Uh, especially if you've been going through discipleship, then you probably are, you have some idea of what discipleship is. So our main three things I want us, the four things I want us to keep in mind is, is we, got, we, <clears throat> we need to proclaim the good news of the gospel. <clears throat> we need to water baptize people, baptize people in the Holy Spirit and then disciple them. That is a process by which every believer can be involved in. All right, so if we decide to do that, if we decide to go out and do those four things, all right, then what is a good way of getting that started? And that's what I want to talk about today is an activity, and probably the next session as well, is an activity that we can do. And what I'm sharing with you is exactly what I'm doing. So... Um, so you can follow my example if you like. Uh, so anyway, I want to read a scripture to you. This has to do with prayer. And this is in 1 John 5, uh, verses 14 to 15. It says this, Since we have this confidence, we can also um, have great boldness before him. For if we ask anything agreeable to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, in whatsoever we ask, we also know that we have obtained the request we asked of him. <clears throat> now, that's a very powerful s statement there. But it's talking about having confidence. It's talking about having boldness if we know we're asking something that is God's will. So what I am <clears throat> laying before you is, how do we make a difference? Well, the way we make a difference is we start pursuing people are looking towards people we know that do not know Jesus so that we are ready to proclaim the gospel to them. And so that means we have to be, we should be preparing ourselves first just to share a testimony, but also share some scriptures about how to get saved with people and then follow it through with water baptism by immersion, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then discipleship. All right. So does Jesus want us to introduce people to him? Absolutely. These four steps I'm going over are, are the Father's will. He wants people to get saved. He wants people to get water baptized and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he certainly wants them to be discipled because he gave, he gave a direct command to them. Now, 
as you begin to pray for people, it's going to be important that you pick who you pick to pray for. Now, you can pray for your family, you can pray for coworkers, you can pray for friends, you can pray for your neighborhood. There's lots of things, lots of different groups, groupings of people you can pray for. I chose to pray for my subdivision. I have 25 houses out in this subdivision where I live. And so I decided to pray for it, use it, use it as an example for the other people that I fellowship or I have church with. We are, and so I've, I'm, I'm setting this before the people that I'm relating to. <clears throat> and so I choose to pick that because as I pray for people, I, then I go out, I like to walk and I get out in our subdivision and go for walks and I come across people. Now, I'm, what I'm looking for as I'm praying for people are confirmations to my praying. I want to know that my prayers are going up, they're being effective. Now, first off, what I just read to you says, if we know it's God's will. So if we know it's God's will and, he know, and we know he hears us, then we, gonna, then we have what we've asked of him. We have great boldness. So I want you to use, consider the boldness um, that when you pray then, and um, use your boldness to pray. Use your boldness to talk to these people that you're praying for. Okay. And so, like I said, I chose a subdivision because I wanted to be around people. So as I begin to pray uh, and I'm praying very fervently, I pray very intentionally and I pray frequently. And because I want to see, I want to see, what I want to see is I want to see my subdivision for all those who are possibly seeking or could be seeking. I want all those people to meet the Lord. And so I've been praying now for about a year and a half. And so far in my subdivision, let me kind of give you uh, a br uh, news report. So far last year, we saw seven people get saved in our little group. We've also had, I've had three people in my subdivision get saved. Um, one of them uh, asked me a question one night of where the devil was, and I told him, and then he started coming to the meetings. Uh, then I, I, was, uh, I felt like I was supposed to go pray for another couple, and my wife and I went down there and prayed for them. They were healed, and then we went back again, introduced Jesus to them, and they both got born again, and they both now are spirit-filled. Uh, but they haven't been water baptized yet. So that's where I am right now. So I am seeing progress, and I'm very excited about it. All right, then, and so I want to, oh, and another thing I just want to touch upon, I've also found four to five people in the, my subdivision already Christians. And so that's very exciting when you come across people that uh, are born again and so on. And, uh, and so I've been fellowshipping with some of them. And that, that, that can have some different issues. Uh, when you come across somebody that's born again, you got somebody that, has been attending church regularly? Have they been discipled themselves? Most of the time, I'd probably say they have not. And one guy that I've been walking with frequently, he, um, he, I found out, in, well, we started talking and walking and he right away says, you just seem to be so carefree. You don't seem to have any issues or anything. I said, well, I don't know why I should. I said, I, I, got, I know I have eternal life. I'm excited about serving the Lord. And he says, why? Well, he says, I, I'm under pressure every day in my thought life against um, uh, the flesh. And, and so we kept talking. Well, what happened is as we talked, it became clear that he hadn't experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So as you come across people that are Christians, you'll see there are different places in their walk. And so then you have to try to bring them up to speed on, on, on you know, being, uh, being, make sure they're saved, water baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's something you can do. So that's, and that's, that's a blessing. That's a, it can be a challenge, but you just want to do that. And as you do this, what you're doing, you're envisioning them and they may join with you in what you're doing. <clears throat> um, and this person was pretty upset because he's known alone for 17 years. And he's never heard this basic truth about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's something we are still working on between he and I. All right. So um, I want to verify is what I'm talking about as far as going around and making disciples. Is this something that, it, that the prophets of old talked about? 
Now, I'm just going to use one place, but yet I want to say there are many places in, in the Old Testament of the prophets that talked about these things. But I'm going to read one in Jeremiah uh, 33 verses um, 14 through 24. And it says this, it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promises made I made to the people of Israel and Judah in those days and at that time I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line he will do what is just and right uh, in the land in those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will be in safety this is a saying this is the name by which I will be called the Lord our righteous savior for this is what the Lord says David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of, of Israel, nor will he, um, nor will a Levitical priest never fail to have an, a man stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to, to, to burn grain offerings, and present sacrifices. It goes on, it says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says, if you can break my covenant with the day, my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at the point of time, then my covenant with David, my servant, and my covenant with the Levites, who are priests ministering before me, can be broken, and David will no longer have a descendant to sit on his throne. I will make the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites, who minister before me as countless as the stars in the sky and measureless as the sand on the seashore. Now, so in reading that, the prophet is saying there's going to be a day come, which isn't, it, was, it wasn't during their day, but in the future, there was going to be a day come when there was going to be a, a righteous Savior uh, come forth. And we know that person is Jesus. And Jesus now rules and reigns on the earth through the kingdom of God. Now, if you want more on the kingdom, I've talked about the kingdom in the past. It's been many weeks ago. Uh, so anyway, Jesus is ruling and reigning from heaven through the kingdom here. And so this is the righteous branch. So this, this prophecy is in the midst of being fulfilled. I mean, Jesus has come. Jesus has already ascended back to heaven. And now what's going on is there's being, he says, and in, in that people are going to be saved. There's going to be priests come forth, ministering priests. And, and so we're seeing all of that. And then right at the end of, the, of these scriptures, it ties in. That's why I wanted to put all these verses in here because it ties in the vision that Abraham saw from God a long, long, long time ago. And what, so what the, the prophet is saying, says in this day he's talking about, there's going to be an ever increasing number of people get saved and be priests. Because he uses the terminology, countless as the stars in the sky and measureless as the sand on the seashore. He's talking about the people of God increasing in great measure so much that you won't be able to count them all. Now that's been going on since Jesus came. And so for 2000 years, the number of people getting saved is increasing and increasing. And that, that is the fulfilling of this prophecy. So we're not done with this prophecy. We're still right in the middle of it. People are getting saved. So we know from reading first John now, we know it's God's will, according to the prophets, that more and more people get saved, that more and more priests show up so, so we're right in the middle of this, and I just want to say one other thing about this. In the, when, when the prophet's talking about this, he's talking about natural Israel. All right, but when we go from the Old Testament to the New Testament, when in the New Testament it talks, it talks about natural Israel, but there's also places it's talking about Israel, and, and, but it's not referring to natural Israel. It's referring to the Israel of God, which is made up of all believers, believer, Jewish believers and Gentile believers. That today under the new covenant is the Israel of God. And that's the people now we're talking about. So salvation has been increasing ever since then. And so we see more and more people, like I said, they're giving, getting saved. Jesus, when he came, he overcame the enemy. He, the, earth, the, uh, the world had no pull on him anymore. And he, and he gave, he got the authority back and he gave the authority um, and the power to his believers so they could do what? Finish pursuing people, getting people saved to fulfill this prophecy. Now, <clears throat> I 
Now, so we see an increase in priests. Priests are doing their priestly duties. Now, I just want to make mention of this. This is in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. This just confirms what I just read about the priest part of it. And you, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be what? A holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifice, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So <clears throat> what we have going on is we have people meeting the Lord and then immediately becoming in a priesthood. Now, who's this priesthood for? It's for all believers. Anybody who believes in Jesus is to be involved in doing priestly duties. Now, the priestly duties does include preaching the gospel to people, you know, and, and, and heralding the good news of the kingdom to people so that they can get water baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit. So this is so we are today are fulfilling this prophecy. Now I want to read to you another scripture. This is found in Mark 11, 24 through 25. Now this is another scripture for praying. So if we're going to reach out and start discipling people, to me, the first step, it was for me anyway, I decided, okay, I picked a subdivision, I'm going to start praying into the subdivision. But this scripture is very powerful. It says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you received it and it shall be yours. And when you stay in praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. So your father in heaven will forgive you. Now, <clears throat> I did... I don't know about you, but when I read a when I read a scripture like this, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you received it, and it shall be yours. I I I look at that and I think, you know, as I look in the natural and I look at things, I have limitations. I mean they're just limitations. So what so much you can do on earth. But when I read things like this, the limitations are removed. There's nothing that cannot be done. I mean, whatever you believe, whatever you ask for, if you believe you have it, it's going to happen. And so we, as believers, as we start praying, if you, as you pick out a group of people to start praying for, remember, you want to, again, you want to be able to be around them so you can see confirmations of your prayers being answered. But as you do that, get a picture of what is going on. It's like you're sitting in a command center wielding great power because the scripture says, whatever you ask for in prayer. So as you pray for your, let's say you're praying for your neighbors. Do you realize there's nothing impossible for you? Look at you know, As you look at your neighbors, you see all kinds of different people, all ages, all, just all kinds. There's nothing impossible for you. Nothing. And that, that, that gives me great confidence because what I'm doing is, as I pray, believing this scripture, I'm calling things into existence. Are they in existence? No. I'm calling them into existence. Why? Because I'm, 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 because I'm, I'm saying it. I'm, I'm declaring it. And all of a sudden, things begin to happen. <clears throat> now, you're not in this by yourself. You're in this to... You're in this with Jesus. Remember this. This is, again, I'm just, I'm just want to make sure you catch this. You're praying according to the Father's will. And because you're praying according to the Father's will, you're going to be given power. He's with you. He wants to see these things happen more than you do. And so it's exciting as you're praying the Father's will and you become courageous. Pay attention to your prayers. Go out and meet people and see if you can detect what's going on. I mean, for example... I remember starting to pray for a person here in my subdivision. I never met the guy. And then I, was, then I was going for a walk on the road behind our subdivision. And this guy stops and he starts talking to me. It's the guy that I was praying for that I hadn't met. He said, he's driving a truck and he stopped. I, I mean, that's, that's, I thought that was, to me that was very unusual. Why would he stop? I think he just wanted to talk. So he stopped and we talked for a little bit and then he went on. I was very excited because I hadn't really I hadn't really been around the guy, and yet he stopped to talk to me. See, prayer begins to have an effect. It influences people. All right. These are some things that happen when you start to pray. I just, I just want to tell you about these. These are things from my own experience. When you start praying, sometimes there'll be thoughts that just pop into your mind. And you know the thoughts that are coming to you are not your own. You just know it because you never thought about that before. Never. 
and all of a sudden these thoughts start coming. Well, that, that is the Spirit of God moving through us while we pray. Another one is, as we're praying, there's, there's, there's changes that take place. Um, I mean, I, I start seeing people differently as I pray. As I make progress in my praying, all of a sudden I start seeing, I, I start seeing the person differently. And I start seeing them like in a different light. That's the Spirit of God working through me to, to, so I can see that my prayers are being effective. All right. Another thing that can happen as you're praying is you can start praying about things and you'll get used to using certain words all the time. But all of a sudden you, you, you start using, you start praying in a different way. And, and you never thought about that before. That is the spirit of God as well. And also as this is going on, prayer is not rhetorical. I find it changes quite a bit. And so, and another thing that happens as you're praying, sometimes you, um, this happened to me already, I was praying along and I, I start. I was praying in the beginning a lot about repentance and fruits of repentance in people's lives. And the Lord one night I was praying that about a certain couple and he said, I'm already doing that in this couple. And I, I said, thank you, Lord. And so what he was showing me is I'm making progress in my praying. And I'm finding that I need I need to change that prayer for that person now. So I start changing how I'm praying, because he showed me that things are progressing along in my praying. All right. So. So those are some things you will notice as you pray. And, uh, and then the other thing is this: sometimes you're praying because you have met somebody out when you're walking. You come across them. You may you may take offense because of something they said. When you're praying, you cannot have an offense in your heart and expect to get to the throne room of God. So you have to deal with that. Prayer causes us to spiritually mature. I mean, it lays a demand on our lives that, to, to like this, I cannot pray on because I have forgiveness, unforgiveness in my heart. I need to deal with that. Because if you don't, you find yourself getting further and further away from God. He's not going to hear your prayers because he knows, he sees, the, he sees the sin in your heart. He wants you to deal with it. So in order to be effective in our praying, we have to, be, we have to diligently watch all our heart, make sure our heart has nothing in there, no sin in our heart at all. Keep that cleared out. Because you, and so, and so prayer, in essence, causes us to spiritually mature in the Lord. Now, I want to read another scripture to you. This is Romans 12, 12. It says, Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. All right, so, so there are times we'll be in tribulation. There are times that people are going to say things or you're, it's going to hurt your feelings. This is just another aspect of praying. Okay, if that happens, like I just said, clear that up. So there's, because we come before the Lord with rejoicing. So if you find yourself being depressed or, or you, you're upset with somebody, deal with it. If you're depressed, start to rejoice. Rejoice until the depression leaves where people are giving praise to Jesus. And if you're being affected in depression by the enemy, they're not going to hang around you. Not if you're giving praise to the Lord. They don't want to be around praise to the Lord. Because wherever there's praise to God, there are the people of God. There, there is the company of the saints where they're giving praise to the Lord. And the devil's not going to be around there. Demons won't be around that. So, be, so, be, so by doing these things, maintain your constant, being constant in prayer. And the reason I think it says that is because there's a tendency. When you're praying and you see your prayers being answered, you see progress being made, there's a tendency to become slack. You don't want to give in the slackness. It takes a certain amount of praying to get things moving. And as you get things moving, just be constant in prayer. Constant in prayer. Do not do not slow up. Don't And don't be seasonal in your praying. What I mean is don't pray for a few weeks, a couple months. Keep praying all, and just be constant in it. The other thing I want to read to you, and this is found in uh, Colossians 4.12. And I, I think his name is pronounced Ephraim who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. Okay. So 
so when you're praying and when you see progress being made, what my response has been, when I'm out walking, I've been praying for people, and I see all of a sudden something happens. I, either somebody comes up, starts talk to me, or I go talk and people want to sit and they want to visit a while. I see changes in them. And I know why it's there. It's because of the prayer that's going up about them. And so I start, it gets me to a place I start to wrestle in prayer. I go back and I become so excited because I can see progress and I start really wrestling. And this is, that's what it's talking about here. You wrestle in prayer. It's not a passive thing. Prayer is, is you're, you're, being, you're being offensive, not offensive. You're on the, no, that's the wrong word. Um, you're, you're being active. You're, you're taking the initiative when you start praying because you're seeing things happen. Okay, let me, I just want to say one last thing. I'll wrap this up. Prayer must be, it must not be a go-to because everything's failed. No, prayer is a the first go-to to keep things moving ahead. So we want to run to prayer. Things happen. There Again, there's no limitations in prayer. Okay, I'm going to stop there and I'll pick this up in the next session. Thank you very much. Have a great day.